Today we're going to be talking about barcodes. A lot of people get confused and think that they're really complicated, but I'm going to try and make it really easy for you. There are lots of different kinds of barcodes out there. Let's start with the ones that you're most familiar with. That's the kind of barcodes that you'd find on the outside of packaging on things you buy in the grocery store. So those barcodes are actually called um, GTIN 12s. They used to be called UPCs, which stood for Universal Product Code. But then the GS1 organization, which is like this big, um, you know, 100 plus country uh, nonprofit organization that's the grantor of official barcodes, changed their terminology so that it was called GTIN 12. Why 12? Because actually, if you count the little number on the left plus the numbers in the middle and the little number on the right, you get 12 digits. GTIN stands for Global Trade Identification Number. So this is a GTIN 12. There's also other GTIN 12s. This is a GTIN 12. So a GTIN 12 is the, is the barcode that they scan at the grocery store. All it tells you, or all it tells the grocery store, is what product do you have? In their own systems, they track the price that they want to charge for that product. So when they scan the item, the price gets matched up, and that's how much they charge you. Now notice at the grocery store that you can, of course, if you say you're going to buy a whole bunch of these. Well, the checkout, the person at the checkout, or you if you're doing self-checkout, can either scan once for every one that you have, or you can scan once and type in the quantity of how many you have, right? So you can see that that really doesn't tell us anything about traceability. It just tells us what product we have. Now there is online at GS1 a way that you can put in one of these codes and determine who the supplier of the product is because actually embedded in that GTIN is a supplier code. But it's not something that you and I are typically going to have a catalog of supplier codes to be able to figure out. So you've got your GTIN 12s. Those are on your retail items that you, you would buy at a retail store. Remember, GTIN 12, 12 digits. The next kind of barcode, and this is where we start to get into my customers, is this kind of barcode. This is actually a GTIN 14. Yep, you can guess it. There's 14 digits along here. On the GS1 website, the company that owns or purchased the, the barcodes will say that this G1014 can, is a code as a case code. It contains a certain number of another G10. In this case, for this one, it contains 12 of these boxes. So 12 of this G1012 are contained in this G1014. Then they would register that in one of the G, these G1012s, there's six, six, right? Yeah, six of these G1012s. So you can see how it's kind of nested. So this is contained within this, which is then contained within this. And then these are often, not always, contained within even a master case, which might have maybe four of these cases. So you can see that one product can contain multiple barcodes based on how it's distributed. Now you'll notice that even the G1014s don't have anything to do with traceability. It's got just, again, a supplier prefix embedded in there, and then the product code. So this is a great barcode for doing inventory control. Have I got the right product? Am I shipping the right product? But it doesn't help us at all with traceability. And my customers with Minotaur Software are really interested in traceability. So, what do we have to do? It means we have to go to a, a, a GS1-128 barcode, sometimes also called a code 128 barcode. It's a special format of a barcode that contains multiple pieces of information that can be grabbed in a single scan. So, in the next video, I'm going to explain how to decode one of those GS1-128 barcodes. But for now, the important thing to remember is that a code 128 barcode is capable of helping you with traceability, but it's not necessarily going to unless it has the right segments in the barcode. So keep that in mind and join me for the next video and you'll be reading barcodes and understanding them in no time.